Yeah, Susanna Peter are really relieved that this pursuit came to a peaceful conclusion on the eastbound 210 Lone Hill. Door right now, but this started out of Pomona, and it was a weapons base a weapons based violation. You see, this was the uh, late model uh, Toyota Tacoma in question, and the suspect in the back of this cruiser right here. Uh, it all started uh, with uh, what is a, a violation of weapons, uh, something with a that had to do with a concealed weapon. And it, uh, Pomona PD were the uh, was the first agency in pursuit. Then CHP took over, and we want to show you the end of the uh, pursuit here. It was a textbook pit maneuver uh, by this unit here that brought this uh, to a conclusion. Uh, we were all definitely holding our breath because this it was suspected that he had a handgun in the car. Fortunately, he did uh, surrender peacefully without incident here. And you can see the officers here from Pomona PD now searching the vehicle for other evidence, maybe for uh, illegal substances or uh, whatever else may have uh, been in the car. But uh, it was over. CHP did not hesitate to do the pit maneuver at the very first opportunity. And now just a investigation uh, taking place here in Glendora. Live at Sky 2 overhead, I'm Desmond Shaw. Peter and Suzanne, send it back to you now in the studio. Thank you, Desmond. Now to our other top story. Along the Colorado River, a search from the air, on the ground and in the water for four people who were missing after a terrible boating accident. Ten people were hurt in the accident near Lake Havasu. Two are in serious condition. CBS 2's Lori Perez is live in the newsroom with more on the boating accident. Lori. Suzanne, divers have been in the water for hours now looking for any sign of the missing boaters who have been identified as one man and three women, though deputies are at this point considering it a potential drowning. At a news conference just a few hours ago, the Mojave County Sheriff said a land search continues on the chance they made it to shore. The crash happened last night north of Lake Havasu near Mojave Regional Park at the California-Arizona border. The sheriff says this is always a busy holiday weekend with lots of traffic on the river. And in this case, that meant eyewitnesses who called 911 describing a horrible scene. Two boats hit head-on about 15 miles per hour in the river near the Topak restaurant. 12 people in the water near Pirate Cove Resort. Uh, they're reporting uh, heavy debris field and victims scattered on various vessels. Let's try and upgrade to an MCI. Officials say a Hallett boat carrying 10 people crashed head on into a sleek craft boat carrying six people. All 16 people were tossed into the water. Ten were injured. Two are in serious condition after being taken to local hospitals. The Mojave County Sheriff says this crash should serve as a tragic lesson to other boaters. Unfortunately, it is all too common that we have accidents on the Colorado River. And uh, it, unfortunately, the, in this case, the prime example, no one was wearing life jackets. It's not mandated that they do so, but we certainly encourage folks to do that. The sheriff says divers will continue searching until nightfall and then, if needed, resume tomorrow morning. It's not yet clear if alcohol or speeding played a role in the accident. Fire officials also say the currents were so strong, some of the rescues were happening between three and five miles from the accident site. Peter, back to you. All right, Lori, thanks. And a lot of people will be heading out onto the water for the Labor Day holiday tomorrow. CBS 2 meteorologist Amber Lee joins us live in studio with our first forecast. Hey, Amber. Hi, Peter. So we've been tracking the slightly cooler than normal conditions for the last few days. Today, we topped out finally in the upper 70s. We haven't seen temperatures in the upper 70s for downtown LA since July 2nd, so about two months ago. Normally, we should be about 85 degrees. Sun going down tonight. 717. This is what it feels like outside. 86 currently for San Bernardino. We still have that sea breeze lingering with us, so it is keeping things rather comfortable, especially closer to the coast. So 73 for Santa Ana, 75 for Camarillo, 72 for LAX, and temperatures currently in the upper 80s for Lancaster. So still toasty within the last hour. It went down by 3 degrees. Earlier was about 90 degrees. Temperature wise, we are still a little bit warmer today than this time 24 hours ago. In other spots, we're down by a degree for Riverside, a degree also near the airport, but definitely a little bit warmer for Oxnard and also for Lancaster. So as I mentioned, that sea breeze lingering with us from a low pressure system to the north of us, spinning in some of that cooler air. I'll let you know when things will actually start to warm right back up again. Back to you. Thank you, Amber. An accused predator has been arrested. Police say he sexually assaulted a woman and a teenage girl in a span of two hours. One was attacked while she was walking home. The other was at a Lakewood High School restroom. CBS 2's Adriana Weingold has details of this investigation. Deputies were able to capture 19-year-old Joshua Cooper after he was caught on security cameras running away from Lakewood High School. Now they are concerned that there could be more victims. 
Concern in Lakewood and Bellflower after sheriff's investigators say 19 year old Joshua Cooper attacked two women in broad daylight just a couple of hours apart. Captain Carlos Marquez is with the Sheriff's Special Victims Bureau. It is concerning that he did it all within an hour and a half of each other. Uh, so hopefully uh, we have put this to an end at this point. Captain Marquez says on Friday morning at around 10, the first victim, a 29 year old woman, was walking on Palm Street in Bellflower when the suspect attacked her from behind, sexually assaulted her, took her cell phone, and then ran. Just a couple hours later, at Lakewood High School, investigators say a 14 year old student was using the restroom when she was sexually assaulted by the same suspect. In both situations, the victims did try to defend themselves. However, uh, in both situations, other people came in to hit the suspect's knowledge or scared the suspect away. Investigators say Lakewood High School is a secure campus and the suspect jumped a fence to get in. Christy Emery has four special needs children. Two of them attend Lakewood High School. Emery says the student who was sexually assaulted is hard of hearing. She's outraged by the assault and scared for her own children's safety. And it's very difficult being a special needs parent because you're trusting your child's life to these people every day. And a lot of our kids, you know, have communication disorders and they can't tell us what happened. So, I mean, it's it's really scary. Investigators say they believe there could be more victims. They're asking anyone with information to contact them. Cooper was booked for assault with intent to commit rape, robbery, and attempted rape. He is expected in court later this week. In Lakewood, Adriana Weingold, CBS 2 News. One man is dead and another is recovering after gunfire erupted at a late night house party. The deadly shooting happened along Tyler Street near the 210 freeway in Silmar. CBS 2's Brittany Hopper is live at the LAPD station in Mission Hills with the latest. Brittany. And Peter, police say that they are still investigating the shooting and that the gunmen are still out there. They are still on the loose. Let's go to some video taken earlier. Now, police say a house party was happening around 1 a.m. with family and friends when four suspects walked into the party and shot two people. One victim, identified as 19-year-old Pedro Hernandez, died on scene. Now, the other victim was treated and released from the hospital. Police say they do believe that the four suspects are gang members, but they don't believe anyone at the party are involved in a gang. Police say that the suspects may have found out about the party through social media. Back here live. Now, if you have any information, you are asked to call LAPD. We are live tonight in Mission Hills. Brittany Hopper, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Brittany. A fiery collision ended in tragedy on the 60 freeway in South El Monte, where two people died when a semi truck collided with a stopped car on the overpass above Peck Road. CBS 2's Joy Benedict shows us the aftermath. It, it was burning. There was, there was flames like 30, 40 feet high. Two balls of fire lit up the sky in South El Monte after a fiery crash on the 60 freeway. Yes, it was horrible. I've seen a lot of horrible things in my life, but this is just another one. Stephen Rose was walking down the street around 4.30 Sunday morning when he heard a semi-truck blaring its horn on the freeway. He looked up to see the crash. There was a tremendous impact. And right away, both vehicles burst in the plane. There was a lot, a lot of fire. This is what's left of the semi truck. Its load, cantaloupe, scattered all over the hillside. The cab landed upside down. The driver didn't survive. And on top of the freeway is the second vehicle. What's left of a black BMW, that driver also died. I didn't see no movement in the car. It was totally burning. It was one big ball of fire. The CHP says both the semi and the vehicle were traveling eastbound on the 60 when the semi hit the back of the BMW. But why it couldn't or didn't stop remains unknown. There was no brakes. I didn't hear no brakes. I didn't hear no screeching or nothing like that. The CHP reduced traffic to one lane during the cleanup, causing quite a backup. Caltrans inspected the bridge and they say it is structurally sound despite the damage, but they are going to have to put up temporary concrete barriers along the shoulder until they can permanently replace the guardrail. And as for the two drivers, little is known about who they are or where they were headed. Although witnesses did try and help with so much fire so fast, they say there was nothing they could do. Joy Benedict, CBS 2 News. Well, the Dodgers started the day tied for first in the National League West. Find out if they're still on top at the end of the day. That's ahead in sports. Plus, using science to keep the animals happy at the L.A. Zoo. 
Later in this newscast, meet the zookeeper who works with the orangutans. Also, it's not a death sentence; it's a life sentence. A veteran is beginning a new war off the battlefield, all because of where he served. His story still ahead. And Bono lets us know how he's doing after losing his voice on stage and stopping a concert.